name is Tartal. Uh, come from Sweden. I am a socialist, and now I'm here. Yeah. So uh, I was just saying how the Swedish national anthem is the prettiest one in all of Scandinavia. Um, I, I think it's such a beautiful song, to be honest. Uh, I agree with that. Uh, mostly because it talks about all the Nordic countries and not just Sweden. It never actually mentions Sweden. Yeah. Um, so it speaks of all Scandinavia, basically. Yeah. That has its own imperialistic uh, <laughs> remnants, of course. But uh, if we skip that part, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Like, like <clears throat> and m the melody of it uh, and all of that. It's yeah. just a very beautiful composed uh, uh, anthem. Uh, yeah. So, uh, give me one second. Um, I'm just going to have to remove some stuff. And pull up some other stuff. Mm, 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 mm. I should have prepared. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't, don't worry. Yeah. Mm, oh. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um. Yeah. So, uh, do you have any? Uh, 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 news articles or stuff like that that you would want to have on screen while we're talking, or no, not not really. Um, I don't think it's necessary. All really. right. Um, yeah. Uh, may no, ma maybe 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 I post something, but I would link you uh, if I think of it. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we can get right into it, really. Um, so, in terms of um, um, Swede Sweden, uh, right now you guys have a social democratic government of sorts. Um, yeah, social democratic slash liberal government. Yeah, so, slash. so... So, in Swedish terms, what do that actually mean? Well, it means that you have a social democratic uh, uh, leader of the government that has to compromise with liberal ideas and, uh, frankly, a lot of neoliberal ideas. So you have a Swedish government that is fundamentally social, socially democratic, but still pushes through uh, neoliberal ideas, which is always good. Or stalling changes that would be social democratic but because they had to compromise with the liberals, neoliberals, uh, those social democratic changes would go through. So, what we're stuck with is basically, you know, an actual centrist hell uh, that is not very productive, I would say. Yeah, so so the... the um, uh, um... The Swedish government, uh, like, if if we were to to look at uh, online figures like you know Sargon and uh, people like that, the more reactionary part of the internet, um, we would get like a, a an impression that Sweden is like the most cucked nation in, in all of Europe, that you guys have like rape gangs walking all over Stockholm, and that uh, uh, it's all the left's fault. Um, so uh, uh, as a Swede, how, how can you... Uh, for example, in, in Norway we have uh, some politicians that speak about that we don't want Swedish uh, circumstances here in Norway. Uh, could you talk a little bit about like how do you as a Swede feel like your country is compared to how it's represented in in popular media or in in online media these days. Yeah, I would I would uh, I would say that Sweden is safe. Uh, it's uh, very still, uh, despite the centrist hell we live through government, still a very uh, comfortable nation to live in. Um, I don't see the the same issues that these people see, the alarmists see, uh, or the fascists. Uh, about rape gangs and stuff like that. It is widely known that we have a gang problem. 
that much I know, but that is usually dependent on our narcotic laws, uh, our laws around drugs, and because they, you know, control the market of drugs. Otherwise, when it comes to uh, rape, I don't really like saying that word that much either, but when it comes to sexual assault and uh, sexual uh, criminal uh, criminal activities, anyways. One thing that is very important when it comes to uh, crime reported, uh, when it comes, to, is that we report every reported single crime, not you know, convicted crimes. So when, so when someone reports a rape, that is sorted in our statistics as a rape, not the conviction. It's not, you know, sort of. So when British media or American media or other European media portray uh, Sweden as what do they call it, the rape capital of the world, <laughs> uh, they they are always resorting to our statistics uh, about, uh, you know, the, you know, reported crimes, not actual convicted crimes. Um, which gets a little bit misleading. Yeah, and also my impression is that you guys have a more liberal definition of like sexual assault than a lot of other countries we, do. Yeah, we have a very wide definition of rape. Like our definition of uh, sexual assault or rape goes far beyond that of many other nations or countries. Um, we don't, you know. A rape in Sweden is not just uh, penetrative, uh, basically, uh, by, you know, genitals. It's uh, also, if you do any, with any other objects, or your hands, that is also rape. We don't, we don't separate those. There's, those are the same. So you don't you don't get a lower sentence just because you only used your fingers or something dumb like that. It's we like we really do have encapsulated it um, in law. Like whatever the fuck you do to another person is not okay. So yeah. basically, all of those cases are filed under this law. And if you and if you compare it to other nations' laws, it's gonna stand out because other countries don't see the same thing as sexual assault or rape as we do. Yeah. So it's gonna be a very different number. So you can't even compare it like that. Yeah. It's um. It, it, it's kind of the same with Norway. Actually, we we also have quite uh. uh I would say, like, liberal definitions of, like, what rape would be, or, or sexual assault, um, so, so, I guess, as a Norwegian, I can relate to that, um, uh, I, uh, I just want to answer Lapis a little bit, uh, oh, yeah, uh, she's talking about the Nordic system of, around sex work, yeah, Lattice, uh I, I want to address you personally since you asked that, and I want to say I think it's shit. Um, oh yeah, it's terrible. Uh, yeah, it's terrible. It, it's by by text, it's kind of good uh, because if you read it, it sounds reasonable. Yeah, you know, it, it sounds it's, like <laughs> it, it's very much a the road to hell is paved with good intentions kind of situation. Um, yeah, exactly, because it sounds reasonable, and it sounds kind of good on paper, but it's enforced horribly. Yeah. It's enforced, it, it's enforced in a way to punish sex workers, uh, and punish, you know, the buyers of sex services, but it's, but it's basically mostly punishing sex workers, even though that is not a criminal act to do. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Um, so, so we have the exact same like model uh, in Norway, of course, and uh, it's pretty terrible. Uh, I know that Philosophy Tube has a very good episode uh, or video on on sex work uh, where he goes pretty into detail about uh, uh, the Nordic model. Um, yeah. 
the Nordic novel model is uh, it's it's good on paper. So when when the law was drafted, I can definitely see why people were in favor of it because it it kind of looks good because it if if it were to be followed as written, it could have been good. But you can't really trust cops to do that can you yeah so no. <laughs> yeah so so uh, i agree with love there she says that they need to legalize it and have it regulated instead uh, i think that would be a much better way of of handling the issues because like my 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 interpretation of it is that they 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 have seen some of the the like stories about like prostitutes getting uh, uh, imported into the country from from poor countries and now they are exploited for for their body or whatever and it's like well there are some people that are doing sex work that just wants to do sex work that's and those people are um, uh, thanks to these laws uh, punished pretty harshly uh, even if it's not illegal yeah yeah agree but but that is because uh the cops can't let anything go so they go by so let's say they i'm sorry if you hear any noise but i have a kitten and Aww. i can't control it uh either way um, hey could, could you send a picture of the cat and then we can have that on screen <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely wait yes wait a second wait a second i said i send it on discord to you right now yeah Lord Seder. Where do I have a picture of this maniac? <laughs> uh, let's see, let's see. I have... Well, that's a picture of them both. Well, I send them both. Yeah, sure. Uh, Aww. And... <laughs> Uh, that's anyway, very adorable. So anyway, the the, the thing is this: uh, the prostitutes never get caught for selling sex. They get caught for uh, everything else around them. So when they get, so when they get in a sting, uh, where they take some uh, buyers um, uh, of uh, sexual services, the cops can never let the co- never let the prostitutes go but they you know search them too and get them for whatever they have let's say maybe it's drugs maybe it's something else maybe it's a suspicious amount of money whatever and so they kind of always fuck them over too just because because the fuck with them so the nordic model really sucks because it doesn't regulate what the police can do to sex workers because yeah. they're they are, they are gonna fuck the sex workers over regardless if sex work is illegal or not. It doesn't work. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it's the whole case with, uh, um, um, where if, if they operate from home, for example, they can actually be charged by, by, for having a brothel because that's illegal. Um, yeah, or if they have a a friend of them uh, to help them, you know, feel secure, that person can be be charged by uh, pimping. So so, it's a really shitty model that really, uh, again, like I said, I am a hundred percent sure that the intentions were good, but uh, it just hasn't turned out the way people hoped, I guess. So, yeah, so. yeah. So as I said, the, like on on text, the law is all right, but it's so exploitable that you can't even trust law enforcement to actually uphold it. So it's useless. Yeah. Anyway, so so uh, let's talk about what we're really here for. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, okay. So what? Uh, what are the names of the parties that are um, uh, um, in government in in 
Uh, or, or, or rather, you could you could do like a quick rundown of the parties that you guys have in Parliament right now. Yeah. Like, you could start at the left and just move right. Or you could start at the right and move left. That would probably be more indicative of what we're trying to do there. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, the parties we got in government now, let's just... sure I'm saying it right so we got a government that is basically center-left uh, so the Social Democrats are uh, as I said you know the, the ma party. major party yeah uh, yeah the major party uh, of the government and then they have um, supporting parties to make sure that their government is legitimate and those are uh, the Green Party, mm -hmm. for example. Um, Let's see. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, those are the government parties. Social Democrats and the Green Party, uh, or, well, the Environment Party, if you want it uh, directly. Uh, translated is the actual government parties. Then you have a then you have a deal with the center party and the liberals in order to consolidate power. Um, so they are not actually part of the government, but they are supporting the current government. Makes the government work. So yeah, it's a minority government basically. Yeah. Uh, uh, those are so the social democrats are social democrats although the social democrats in sweden are not social democrats any longer that much if we are to look at what they are doing uh the environment party are uh, very confused liberals um basically they're focused on environment issues and selling out our public means um, then you got the center party which is well it was a party for farmers nowadays it's a neoliberal party um, and then you got the liberals and no one knows what the liberals are so I can't tell you what the liberals are what their I can't tell you what their basis is I guess they're liberals but I don't know <laughs> Um, then on the opposition side, you got the Christian Democrats, of course, uh, which is leaning very Trumpian. Um, you got the moderates, which are also starting to lean very Trumpian. You got the Sweden Democrats, who are fascists. I'm not even gonna try to cover that up. Yeah, no. Straight yeah. out fascist. Like, if, 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 you uh, look at, if you look at the images from when the Sweden Democrats started, they had swastikas on their, like, party meanings and shit like that. So, and and that, is, that is not long ago. Just to say that. That is not long ago. That is maybe 15 years ago. Yeah. Like, yeah. And then, in opposition, you also got the lefty party. Um, uh, they are not in the government because the social democrats don't like the lefty party because oh, really? they're too lefty huh that, that's uh, interesting because that, that's like a difference uh, between the social democrats in sweden and the social democrats in norway like the norwegian labor party would want to work with like uh what we call socialist left um yeah uh, but they don't want to work with like the red party which is like even further to the left yeah, no, th that's because we have very interesting... We can't go over this on the stream, but we have very large history of uh, the, the battle in the lefties and social democrats in Sweden uh, throughout the 1900s. So oh, yeah. the we reason why this is is because the lefties before, you know, the fall of the Soviets were communists. And communists and social democrats don't walk hand in hand. And no. we know that. We know that since fucking forever. Um, the only time they did was the minor strikes during the 1960s in Sweden. 
That's the only time they both united. And that's because the strike was illegal. So that's why the communists joined in. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so yeah, like, um, we obviously have some, like, uh, uh, differences between the, the Socialist Party and, and the more uh, uh, Socialist Parties in Norway as well. Whereas the, the, yep. uh, the Socialist Left, uh, Asve, they, they started out as Labour Party members breaking out of the party over uh, uh, a vote on Norwegian membership uh, in the EU in the 90s, I think. Um, yeah. Whereas the Red Party is actually a combination of a, a ML party and a, a little bit more um, uh, mainstream-ish um, communist slash socialist party. But... Um, um, so those two combined and they made the Red Party, which is now the furthest left you can go within the Norwegian parliamentary system. Um, yeah, so, so, I would, so I would basically say that in Sweden we... Uh, I would say that socialism is rather weak in Sweden in parliamentary uh, setting. But I don't think it's weak in, you know, grassroots or in uh, individual groups or whatever. Uh, but they haven't reached, you know, parliamental level yet. I think they're too young. Yeah. Um, okay, so, so but... uh, quick question. And you don't have to answer this if you don't want to, of course. But uh, are you a member of a party? Uh, I was a member of the Social Democrats. Uh, but I left it uh, because I thought they were getting too liberal. Okay. Uh, right now I'm unaffiliated. Um... I think I'm joining the left party, left party, but uh, it depends a little bit. I think I think they had the strongest points um, because they're still socialists uh, in a way that I like. Uh, I'm definitely gonna vote on them the way, so doesn't matter if I'm a member or not. But yeah, so so what's your take on their leader, uh, Jonas Sjöstad? Sjöstad? Yeah, he's, uh, I think he's wholesome. <laughs> he's like, no, he's really good. He's, um, he's a really good person. Uh, he seems really genuine in what he believes in. And he seems really genuine in, you know, basically everything. I never heard him say anything weird or dumb or anything like that. He seems to actually believe in what he, in what he preaches. He's gonna be changed. Uh, right now, to another leader named Dadgostar. Uh, um, could, could you write that in, in our chat to me? So that I know how yes. to... Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Wait, I'm just gonna... Uh, Nushi Dadgostar is gonna take over the lefty party. And she seems like a really good candidate as well because she she seems fierce. Uh, actually, well, she looks fierce. Yeah, uh, she she has shown herself in debates that she doesn't fuck around. Uh, she is very you know, fuck around and find out. And it's been really, really, it's been really a pleasure to see her debate in the in the government, in the parliament. Uh, so I think she's a really good choice, nice. actually. Um, uh, let's yeah. see. Um, Lopez is wondering how bad they. I'm I'm going to guess the Sweden, uh, not the Sweden Democrats, the Social Democrats have become like. Uh, what what would you say is the worst policy that they are? Pushing these days. Uh, I think that I think the worst one, uh, and uh, is gonna. I'm gonna have to get a little bit historical about it. Uh -huh. uh, when we when we did have the real big union strikes of the mines, we came about to a solution that was basically that we had a, an employee. Uh, employee principle that you know first in, uh, last in first out so basically it 
it was a policy that was going to guarantee that if you had been with a company for a long time, you weren't, you know, the first one to go when they needed to let people go. Which could, which were used to guarantee you your employment, basically. That your loyalty would pay off. Yeah. Um, the neoliberals of the Center Party right now are trying to push uh, a change to that one. So basically, what they want to change is that what well, basically they want to remove uh, the employer's uh, uh, obligation to look at this. Um, basically, today the, uh, the employer has to look at how long have you have been employed and how good you have been to the company. And therefore, they can't fire you if you have been, you know, spotless. They can't, they can't fire you when they want to lay off people. So they have to go to the people they hired after you. Yeah. So the center, center party and the liberals want to kind of remove that order. And I don't see any big fight from the social democrats to keep that law. So they have just agreed to that they want to rewrite it. And I think that's like, no, don't do that. Because that is very, I mean, that law is very uh, central to social democratic uh, government style or a social democratic uh, worker environment. That, oh, that, yeah. you're guaranteed, that you're guaranteed your employment for your loyalty. Like, yeah, I, they're I, not gonna... I would say like the one thing that that social democratic parties really have going for them is that they have, at least in the Nordic countries, and uh, especially in Norway, uh, I, I couldn't speak too much about it uh, uh, in Swedish or Danish terms, but yeah. they have always been like at the forefront of fighting for workers' rights. So this sounds yeah. really uh, uh, uncharacteristic of a social democratic party. Yeah, and they seem ready to give that up, and I don't understand what they are doing. So, because that's really fucked up. Because miners fought for this, and, like, for a reason. Like, yeah, I know it sucks to be newly employed and be the first one to have to go. Yeah. I understand that, but a 65... 63 year old also need his employment and he's, he can't be kicked out after like what 30 years on the firm yeah like when you've given 30 years of your life to to a corporation or a firm then it, it it's bullshit that you would have to be like the first one to go because they have to lay off people yeah so yeah th that is that is the biggest biggest ilk of mine when it comes to how they're running things right now. Uh, it doesn't seem social democratic at all to uh, even negotiate. It should be unnegotiable. It should be... You shouldn't even negotiate it. It should be, fuck off with that thing. We don't do it. Like... Yeah. Uh, that is one thing. I, th I think there are some smaller things, but th that is the one big thing that really fucking ticks me off. Um. Yeah. So, um, about the Social Democratic Party, uh, the leader there today is Stefan Löfven. And he's yeah. been the leader of that party for some time now, hasn't he? Yes. So... Um, are there anyone... Be uh, let's see... How how bad are the social democrats doing in the polls these days? Uh, not too uh, bad. The, not too bad. I think they're <laughs> still in their almost in the thirties, maybe twenties. Yeah, they're somewhere around twenty six percent according to Politico. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah. so are the people? Are there any talks about switching him out at any point? Not as I know right now, but uh, but but I wouldn't see any reason to do it. His, uh, despite despite what despite what 
media outsiders we're gonna say he's a kind of a good uh leader uh he's been he's been stable during the coronavirus he's been uh very firm and very you know very leader like when it comes to lead sweden through things um yes. the one thing i the one thing i miss from him is that he doesn't have the characteristic of a typical social democratic leader that he 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 uh he can't be aggressive or he can't be you know fierce uh against the uh, uh, opposition that is the only thing i really miss about him but otherwise he seems like a good you know leader but yeah so so what is your take on on sweden's approach to to the coronavirus uh all right so i am not educated in uh in viruses or epidemiology uh i want to say that first just to make sure that people understand that um I want yeah, to so, say that... so this is a layman's uh, uh, discussion of it. So, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would like to say that uh, I never mistrusted Tignell uh, when he uh, spoke about uh, their approach about the virus. The... I think it's been misconstrued a little bit in media outside of Sweden, uh, how our tactic was used. The idea was, basically, the idea was that we keep the society open to a degree, uh, to make sure that Sweden hospitals don't get overflowed. Mm -hmm. Our entire strategy was built on, we are okay with that healthy individuals get infected as long as our intensive cares doesn't get overflown. So basically, stay home if you can. If you can't, well, then do social distancing. One thing I must say, the biggest failure with the Swedish strategy was that we forgot that people are idiots. <laughs> yeah. Because I think the Swedish strategy was not wrong. I still think it's kind of, it was kind of a clever way to get around all the lockdowns and not lockdowns and then lockdowns and not lockdowns. But we forgot that people don't give a shit. <laughs> like, there are so many people out there th that does not even believe in the virus. Oh, that yeah. They do not, that they do not take those things in care. Which keeps, you know, a kind of rapid spread about them. Because they just don't care about these things. But, yeah, so, yeah, so you guys have had, like somewhere above 10,000 covid deaths at this point time do you yeah i think uh, yeah i think that is yeah that, that uh, I, I personally i would say that that's pretty ugh, oof um, yeah that's, that that is pretty bad i agree yeah especially like if you if you compare it to norway which you know we we have about half your population and we you guys have about 20 times the deaths that we have um but do you think that there could have been any, um, or what kind of improvements on the Swedish tactic would you have liked to have seen? Uh, I think I would have seen, uh, I would have liked to see more uh, incentives to stay home. Um, not, you know, necessarily uh, lockdowns, but, you know, uh, make sure that people get paid, um, even if they stay home. So you don't. Uh, so you like. You maybe you could scrap that you get on sick payment, uh, stuff like that. Uh, I I think those things are more important than lockdowns because what? Yeah, 10k of course is a big failure. It's still a pandemic, so people are gonna die. But here's the like the gist of it is none of these tactics have ever proven successful in history. Like we can only keep trying because 
pandemics are pandemics. So they're gonna ravage differently for different countries. Like for New Zealand, example, for example, it makes perfect sense for lockdown because they are a small island. Yeah, it's very easy to lock down that. So you can lock it down and keep the virus out. I know also Vietnam did a uh, did a successful lockdown. Um, to keep the virus out. Yeah, so Sweden got not good numbers. Uh, there, are, there are a lot of reasons for that. It's not only the restrictions. Uh, I can also tell you, like, the virus hit our elderly care, which is largely privatized, which, is, which also didn't have the required equipment. Yeah, it's, it's pretty bad from, like, a, a socialist nation like Sweden. Uh, that the <laughs> that the yeah, uh, the okay. elder care is is privatized in that way. Yeah, uh, so it hit hard in the elder care, which is largely privatized, which didn't have the equipment, which of course also spreads to you know personnel and stuff like that. Yeah, like, you, like I'm, so it's not it's not only the strategy itself that has caused, you know, the infections, and, um, and, like, for me, myself, like, as a professional, and I'm gonna tell you that now, I know people have been screaming about uh, I'm sorry, you cut out for a second. Hello? Did he... Did it disappear? Yeah, uh, give me one sec. Because I am still... It still says that he is on... I should probably just... Let's see. Um... Uh... Oh, okay. Yeah, try to do that. Let's see. Um. Yeah. Oh, you're back. Yeah. Okay. So, so, what were you saying? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it's not only the Swedish strategy; it has a lot of complications within the Swedish system that causes uh, the spread to be as big as it is. Um. I think, in general, if you look at the Swedish strategy, I think it's fine. It's, it's fine, but it's, you know, it doesn't help the people are morons. Uh, yeah, it has a tendency to not help, at least. But to to make a draw to a, a a historical fact about like pandemics, like look at the Spanish flu when the, when California got it, they did a um, they did a severe lockdown, and then they opened it early, and the virus just fucking exploded. And the reason it did that is because you can't contain it by. Um, by locking it out, uh, without locking it down properly, and you would have to do that for years. Like, you can't... I don't think... Yeah, I know Sweden is not socialist. We, we know Sweden is not socialist. We're talking about what... Well, right now we're talking about COVID and the response in yeah. Sweden, but... Uh, broad, more broadly, we're talking about like what it means to be a socialist in Sweden. Yeah. So basically, so since the institutions of Sweden are what they are, and you, had, you know, we had, had uh, uh, right-wing parties um, ruling Sweden for many years before the Social Democratic Party came along again. Uh, we don't have the resources to deal with this shit in the healthcare system. 
and that is a massive cause for the spread of the virus. And to not acknowledge that, I think it, I think it's rather dumb. Yeah. Okay. So, if if uh, yeah, I'm, I, I guess we're I'm pretty pretty much set with the whole uh, um, COVID thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think so too. So uh, if we get back to like what socialism actually is in in Sweden, um, are there any like activist groups um, uh, that are, you know, big socialist groups in Sweden, or are they just like underground? All of them. Uh, I would say, except for the lefty party, I would say most of us are underground, and I would say that most of us are focused on anti-fascism today. Uh, where uh, the socialist movement is not that big. It, I mean, it's big, but it's. Uh, I think it's mostly focused on uh, uh, anti-fascism today. So we don't have the big socialism that you maybe. Th- um. Yeah. Um. Uh, uh, um, so yeah, what are what... what are the the kind of um, um, the policies that the left broadly uh, maybe the left party would be a a, a better uh, figure of this than than the Swedish Social Democratic Party but uh, so what are the the policies that are like the most like oh those are connected to the left uh, in Sweden these days. Uh, that are proposed, I mean, or that are... Yeah, for for example, um, if you think about the Red Party in Norway, um, the leader of the yeah, Red yeah, Party yeah. Talks, talks a lot about... Uh, or or if, you, if you would take Bernie Sanders, you would have, like, uh, uh, Medicare for All, for example. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, so what are, like, the uh, most recognized, uh, recognizable uh, lefty position in Sweden today? I was. This is gonna be a little bit laughed at, but I'm gonna say that one really, uh, one thing that I really like with the left party is that they propose, they they kind of demand that the social democratic party lift this question, and that is uh, glasses for all children that needs, so like oh. free glasses. Uh, yeah, well, and I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but it speaks a lot of character of what they're trying to do. Yeah, um, like like, like we, we we actually kind of have that uh, discussion in Norway as well, mostly because the the uh, uh, some of the right wing parties and some of the right wing parties in government actually want to uh, get rid of. Uh, 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 economic support for glasses for young people, and uh, I think at least, um, in case I misrepresent that, but uh, they also try to get rid of like, um, oh, what do you call it, braces, for uh, yeah, for like they want to cut all support for that, so that yeah, okay, you know, so so well, you can we, physically we, look when people are poor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so uh, so they're pushing the idea of glasses uh, to be for children under 18, I think. Uh, they're also pushing uh, for uh, letting the the uh, they call the benefits the benefit regulations when you're asl- uh, when you're sick uh, to be lighter, like that you. Not necessarily that you get more money, but that you get money for less condition. Like, you you don't have to be deadly sick to get conditions for uh, for get benefits for sick. Um, and uh, they're trying to push for basically uh, what they're trying to do is basically standard bog standard social democratic shit. But they have to do it because the Social Democratic Party isn't doing their shit. So, like they're trying to do the reform 
reformist thing without being actual reformists uh, yeah. because they have to because no one else is pushing those issues so it's kind of weird it's um, so socialism I think socialism in Sweden has really had taken a, 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 a stand back and and stand in the grassroots uh, and anti-fascism has taken the real front and because I think that's what unites us all you know in a way um, yeah so, that is sad but it's also necessary so yeah l let's see uh, socialism in Sweden is just sitting around listening to Palma speeches while still voting for the Social Democrats, thinking that if they just get enough votes, they'll actually be socialists. Uh, <laughs> I'd say the major uh, fault line at the moment between the left party and the Social Democrats, and between and within the Social Democrats, is employment protection. Yeah, we, we talked a little bit about that. Uh, as a condition for supply in Parliament, the Liberals and Centre Party pushed for a study into and change in employment protection laws yeah um so we talked about that yeah so um, what about what about unions like how strong are the swedish unions they're still pretty strong in certain sectors uh like uh, the builders unions is still strong um i think that i think the most classical industrial uh unions are still pretty strong uh i would say uh, i would say the weakest unions are within uh within retail uh within restaurant and you know sort of like um i think this you know the the the, the typical you know handyman worker uh, unions are still pretty strong. Uh, they also, uh, you know, propose a lot of things that the Social Democratic Party don't. So they are, you know, still working for their workers, so to speak. Yeah, so are a lot of people in Sweden... Um, like, uh, what's your... Do you know what your largest union is? Uh, it would be, yeah, we have a, we have a, a lot of unions under the, uh, umbrella union LO. So oh, yeah, got, so you know, basically the exact same thing as Norway. Yeah, so basically that is the biggest one. So it, it contains the builders union, steel worker union, blah, 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 the painting, the plumber union. Yeah, so, I, so according to uh, Wikipedia, which is, you know, the most reliable source of things, um, in, in, what is it, 2000 and, let's see, 2001, 2002, Allo in Sweden had about 2 million members. Yeah. That's... I am, I am one of them. Oh, nice. How long have you been a union member? For 14 years, I guess. Oh, nice. Since I started working. <laughs> um, yeah, like... so... It, it's interesting, though, because the Sweden version of... of uh, the Swedish version of, of Allo uh, has about 2 million members. The Norwegian version has about a million members. So that would actually be pretty much to scale, seeing as you guys have twice the population. Um... Yeah, but we also have, you know, we had the anarchist, well, we had the syndicalist uh, unions of uh, Sako. Um, we also have different unions. We also have the unions for non typical blue collar workers, but white collar workers called the union. They suck. Uh, because uh, being a member of the union, as in as they are named the union uh would be like having your employer as your union oh, so and you're like the union <laughs> yeah yeah they suck the, 
they suck. Okay. Like, uh, okay. I, the only thing is, my, my girlfriend is an electrician. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she changed job now to working on building in industrial machines, at least. And so she's not technically an uh, electrician anymore. So she thought she had to change, you no know, union. And she was like, yeah, should I join union? union? And then I looked it up and, yeah, no, don't join that. So, so... Join... So what's the main issue with this union? Uh, like, they are a union, but they are not a union. Like, the, you, yeah, you get insurances and stuff like that. Okay. You do get that. But, like, they're not a union that would go and strike. They're not a union that would really fight for your rights. Like, kind of. It's like, you know, speaking of weak union that only takes your money, uh, yeah. Yeah. That. All right. The, like, 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 let's say the builders union of the LO is like, they, they have, uh, you know, people to go out to work sites and look, so there's the security of some right. Uh, they look after, you know, that make sure that people on the work site is legitimate to be there. Um, they're, you know, they, they do all this kind of work. The union doesn't do any of that. They just exist as a... I don't even want to call them a union, really. Like, yeah, they're union. They're united, but <laughs> for what cause, really? It does <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. doesn't really they don't really do anything so yeah so Kvant Kisse is saying a yellow union is probably the word you're looking for um, yeah okay yeah sorry yeah uh, let's see uh, if I have anything um, more yeah so so who would you say would be like the the um leaders of the different socialist movements uh like are there any like names to look out for uh in sweden if you if you like if you if you would want to have like oh this is the best grasp i could get on socialism in sweden these days uh who would you have to look up if you would have to look up some people oh would... god no uh like if, if there are any thought leaders or any like uh, uh leaders of like political parties that you would uh, uh, promote into that sort of position or well, like youth well, leaders so. well, well obviously I mentioned Nushi Doug the Star uh, I would look out for her see what she does uh, with the left party of Sweden mm-hmm. uh, she's a little bit more like a youth uh, like a youth party she's a little bit more aggressive she's a little bit more uh, radical in, but I don't. I don't know. I'm a little bit. Uh, I think the Swedish left is very, very uh, fragmented, in a sense that we are very, we are a lot of independent people that work together, but yeah. we're not you know, really unionized. Would you say so that you guys are uh, individualist? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, but but I don't think that's the problem. I think I think the problem is that uh it's really sorry, it's really hard to get into um the parliamentary strife that uh fragmented people are usually to find rather than groups. Um and no, I don't have any real names. I just say that look for Swedish lefty thinkers and you will find the unity within them, but I don't like I think most of us are basically connected to the lefty party in some way or another. Mm-hmm. Uh some are social democrats that try to reform the social democratic party. 
but I basically think that most of us try to work within the parliamentary system that we actually have, because we we some way understand that we can't do it without it. But as I said, I don't think there are any certain names. There are. Yeah. No. Uh, and, are uh, and you know, to a, to a degree, you know, socialism. Uh, in and of itself, it isn't really about star power, but but um, I guess just having someone to like put that uh, put the the uh, label on that, yeah, like oh, this person would be helpful to look into if you this person is fairly representative of the left ideals, then that yeah. makes it easier for people outside of Sweden to kind of get into the the information. Yeah, I think I think if you follow me, uh, I basically will eventually lead you to these people. But uh, I have a really hard time to just name drop people. Uh, yeah, because it's uh, uh, because the movement. I would say that the movement in Sweden is really fractured right now. So I would say that it's not as solidified as I want it to be um, at all. Like, like myself, for example, I'm pretty individ individualistic in my approach to Twitter and political commentary uh, and stuff like that. So, like, I would say, like, just follow people from Sweden that are lefties and you would eventually find the real unionizers because I'm not one of them. Um, and that's all I can say, really. But as I said, I think the left, the left Sweden is really fragmented to degree that is really, it's really bad. But the, it's it's only fragmented that way because of the social democrats being so fucking flimsy of who they are. Because if we can't trust the social democrats, what's the point? Yeah. How many people do the left party have in parliament? Ish. Uh, how many do the left have? Uh, they have... 27? Right now they have... Yeah, do they have that? How many people are in your parliament? Like twenty-seven. That's a lot of people. <laughs> oh yeah, we. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's chunky. Yeah, three hundred forty-nine and twenty-seven of those are socialists, I guess. Yeah, we have three hundred. Yeah, yeah. Your parliament is um, larger than ours. I can just say that. Yeah, there's a, once again a historical reason for that, but I'm not gonna go through that because that's a lot of history. Through, <laughs> so I'm just gonna say, yeah, yeah, that's a lot of people. <laughs> but again, again, it's like, it, like, 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 as I said, I think. The problem with Swedish socialism right now is that Swedish socialism is very focused on anti-fascism. So, I think there will be a hard time to gather around socialism. So, yeah, that actually kind of leads me into like, what kind of, um, if you were to go to like a Swedish dinner party with like parents and friends and whatnot. Uh, and you were to tell them, like, uh, oh, yeah, I'm a socialist. Like, what kind of response would you get? Like, what kind of social standing does socialism have in, in Sweden? Well, for my parents, it wasn't a big deal. Uh, my my grandfather was a big uh, social democrat within the LO and stuff like that. So for my parents to realize that I rely a lot on Marx was not that big a surprise um, at all. But it is a bit of a problem when it comes to friends and family role because a lot of them are Sweden Democrats Oof. and they don't take it lightly. Yeah, no. So, 
both my brothers are Sweden Democrats, uh, and that doesn't really go well. Would you say that I, your parents would have? Damn, uh, I'm going really into your your family now, but yeah, 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 but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yes. would you say that your parents would have a bigger problem with your brothers being Sweden Democrats than you being a socialist? Yeah. Are you the older brother? I'm the middle one. Oh, okay. Wow, that's huh. <laughs> my, right. my parents, my parents have a larger respect for me and my intellectual thought than they have for their <laughs> than your brother's dumb dumb thoughts. Yeah, uh, than their racial bullshit. Yeah. Like my mother, my mother and father might not like that I'm a socialist. Uh, I don't mind that they don't mind that, but at least I'm not a racist asshole. That's basically what. That's basically what my mother told me. Like, at least you're not a racist, sexist asshole. That's that's all she needed to know, and I think that's. I don't know how you know prevalent that is through Swedish families overall. I can't tell you that. But uh, uh, since so many people still uh, voting for the Social Democrats, I still gotta, you know, think that a lot of people are against the Swedish Democratic value. Like, people still don't like racism and sexism and stuff like that. So Yeah, the, um, the, the Sweden Democrats, like, uh, I'm looking at the, the political... Uh, poll average uh, and it looks like they have taken a bit of a dive in the polls though like at some point they were the largest party in like at, uh, at the beginning of uh, start of nine, 2019 yeah they... I think it has a lot to do that people realize that they are believing in uh, COVID conspiracies and stuff like that so I think that people you know Oh shit! I can't be a Sweden Democrat. Um, Would they most likely go over to like the moderate party? Like if I think, they... but no, I think it's a fifty-fifty between the Social Democrats and the moderate party. Oh really? Um, yeah, because the Sweden Democrats have made a very big picture of them being Social Democrats, but nationalist. Yeah, that's a bit of an oxymoron in my opinion. Like, in my opinion, yeah. all leftist thought has to be global. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. But your opinion doesn't matter in these minds. So oh yeah, of doesn't... course. <laughs> so, so it's like, yeah, of course, we already know that, and we already know that they're not social democratic at all. But they say that so people are like yeah okay they're social democratic but you know nationalistic so let's go there and they do that and i think some of them went back when it came to covid because sweden democrats can't seem to uh be consistent with their beliefs there so some of them probably went like oh shit they don't know shit uh and went back to party moderates or social democrats doesn't really matter which uh, yeah so the moderate party is it that's basically like a, a uh milk toast conservative party isn't aren't they yeah a little bit it's a little bit conservative market free uh party basically yeah and they would be seen as like the main opponent to the swedish social democrats i guess yeah. Yeah. They are. Uh, they, they were actually named the right party for most of the 1900s before they changed the name to the moderate party. Uh, it, yeah. yeah, so... so What do you think are the chances that they will get into power by your next election? It will happen if the Swedish Democrats start to grow again. Uh, and and the moderate party has started to taking on the Swedish Democrats, uh, Sweden Democrats uh, rhetoric. 
so oh, they might no. try to get on the grift. Okay, so so I can just tell you from experience right now because our uh, the sister party of the moderate party in in Sweden, like the the Norwegian sister party would be the right party, the conservatives in Norway, and the sister party of the Sweden Democrats would be uh, the the um, progress party in Norway, and we tried that combination and it failed miserably. So, um, oh yeah, I know. If you if you get a yeah, chance to speak to any parliament members at any time, just warn them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it, it doesn't matter. They, they jumped the grift party on you know the right wing thing, uh, and uh, it seems to get worse. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I can't tell you what will happen in twenty twenty two. All I can tell you is that I. God hope that the Social Democrats are still the leading party. Like, even if I vote for the lefty party, I still hope the Social Democrats are still in the, you know, you yeah. know the captain of the ship. I think, like, the, the, uh, um, the hope that you should get is that the left party grows big enough so that the Social Democrats can't really ignore them. Um, yeah. Uh, and that would be like that's what I'm hoping for here in Norway at least, um, because I, I do think it's more healthy when social democrats uh, um, work alongside parties to the left of them than when they work alongside parties in the, the in the center. Yeah, uh, I I agree with that. So basically, we can summarize that Sweden is. So socialism as a uh, movement is fragmented, but we have a very consistent anti-fascist movement that work very consistently. And uh, and the social democrats need to get to shit. Yeah. Uh, before I before I I. Uh, uh, let you go. Uh, I want to ask you a little bit about like uh, Swedish uh, online personalities. Um, do do you have any larger left leaning ones? We have Mia Mulder. Oh. Um, do you know who she is? Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't think so. Okay, can I link her in chat? Maybe? Yeah, um, sure. Go ahead. As long as you guys uh, don't leave me for her right away. Um. <laughs> <laughs> they will leave you right away. Mia Mulder is really good. Uh, she's a uh, trans uh, lefty. Uh, she's also a historian, a great historian. And I can assure that because I am a great historian, so I know great historians. Oh. Um, she's oh. Really good. Thirty-eight thousand uh, subscribers. That's pretty good. So I would recommend her. Uh, other Swedish proponents, uh, I wouldn't recommend. I don't. No. Yeah, uh, because uh, you know you have morons like uh, Peter Sweden, of course, um, which is actually a Norwegian in in hiding. But but let's not get into that. <laughs> uh, but then you have an angry foreigner as well over there. Um, I used to like him. <laughs> and, and then Wait, I, what? Yeah. Oh my god. I really enjoyed his beef with Peter Sweden because I... Like, okay, so so I'm, I'm gonna be very clear about my, my view about Angry Foreigner. Um, my... First of all, I liked him more when I was a little bit more reactionary in my, in my political uh, outlook. Um... <sighs> Back when I watched a lot of reactionary uh, uh, content creators like Sargon and Stixxxnammer and all of those idiots, um, yeah. uh, so at that point I found him to be a like somewhat reasonable voice, uh, and on some things I guess he like he is like a broken clock, you know, he's right twice a day, um, whereas I think he has a lot of. 
he's doing a lot of the whole I'm an immigrant and I uh, and I uh, uh, um, uh, I'm skeptical to immigration, so you should listen to me. Um, yeah. And also, he does a lot of legwork for for um, the Sweden Democrats. Or at least he did. I, I haven't really seen a single video of him in like two years, I think. So. Yeah, uh, yeah. he also has the famous video where he talks to Gudrun Schumann, which is the, you know, the ex-party uh, leader of the left party in Sweden, uh, where he talks about her, about prolapse, which is... Classy. <laughs> fucking weird. It, and it's not it's not even you know a Skype call or anything like it's a live show oh. so he talks he talks to her straight to her face and describes what a prolapse is. and see. I'm sitting there and I'm like <laughs> what are you doing man <laughs> so what uh, are you cost is saying that rose wrist is a good Swedish YouTuber. I don't know who Rose Wrist is. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah, this is pretty good. Um, uh, I haven't watched too much, uh, actually, but I would suggest that you watch Mia Mulder, uh, me, and, uh, well, Rose Wrist, obviously. Let's see. Uh, Yeah, Rose Rest sits up at about 5.64k. Uh, uh, who, who is Rose Rest? I, I have no idea who this person is. I, I, I guess it's like uh, when you are talking about... Oh, hey, thank you. Uh, I guess it, it is like when I'm talking about these guys uh, or these guys and gals. Uh, it would be like if I were to mention to you like one of Norway's uh, largest streamers, to my knowledge. Um, yeah, which would be like uh, Tapelino, which has like forty-three thousand. I have a feeling you don't know who this person is. Yeah. Okay. So uh, what I would say to you is that the reason I'm not mentioning any other is because uh, most Swedish YouTubers are not either not political. Or their shit. Uh, like, yeah, I could say PewDiePie, but... <laughs> oh, yeah, he's like, a sweet dude. <laughs> yeah, but, like... But we're not, recommending, we're not recommending Nazis there, so... Yeah, so... Uh, one channel I can recommend you, it's dead. It's dead. As, uh, Epic Swedish Meal Time, I think it's called. Where they cook Swedish meals by throwing shit at the walls. So I it's like basically it. Epic Meal Time, just Swedish version. It's a more violent version. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Epic Swedish Meal Time. It's dead, I think, but it's fun. Oh. Uh, and something else I can recommend. Uh, this is not Swedish, but. But I can recommend llamas with uh, with hats. That's good. <laughs> yeah, now we're just uh, now we're just listing off who who you're sub to. <laughs> <laughs> llamas with hats is a great, great, great <laughs> flash show that ended far ago. Far far ago. I I am so old. Holy shit. Um, yeah. So so just. Oh yeah, llamas with hats. Oh yeah, I know that. So, mm -hmm. how old are you? If I'm allowed to ask that. Yeah, I'm 32. Oh yeah, so not that much older than I am. Hmm. No, but I'm like 10 years older than your chat. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> possibly at least. Um, <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, is there anything? Is there anything else you you would like to say about socialism in Sweden? Like, uh, for example, do you have like any movements that um, could need support, or any any uh, any ways from for people outside of Sweden to help uh, any groups in any ways or stuff like that? 
gonna see if I have got anyone that can be donated to. Yeah, or even if it's just like a shout out in order to make people a little bit more aware, uh, all that stuff. Uh, you know, the the the, the point uh, of this project I... is kind of to highlight movements all around the world. So yeah, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think I can, I don't think I have any means to do that. But uh, I, I would like to say that if you go, if you go to uh, Antifa.se uh, You got a database of Swedish Nazis um, This is construed by the anti-fascist action um, Oh nice I don't think um, So you can find like you can go to your county in Sweden uh, and find the Nazis at your region uh, so you can identify them. Um, otherwise, than that, I, d I don't think there is a lot of socialist moment movements in Sweden that are really prevalent at the moment. Um, which, yeah, it's sad, but it can't really help it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we got the antifa.se database uh, that we all use and that we all can put to. And if you know, if you know a Swedish person in your country, wherever you're from, and he's a Nazi, you can send that to antifa.se to let us know that that person is there or wherever he is. Um, to let us know that we have a switch Nazi on the loose. Um, <laughs> Someone broke we... out of the ca their cage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but, but because that's how it works. Like, as I said, the socialist movement might be broken, but the Antifa movement is not. We have a very rigorous Antifa movement. Uh, I... that, and I'm a part of it. Yeah, and but... I, I'm a part of it, and I work with it uh, constantly. So, if you got any information on Swedish fascists, just you know, just send them right to me. I will get them public. Yeah, don't worry. And you should, of course, beat the shit out of them in in Minecraft. Yeah, it's... in Minecraft. Yeah. All right, dude. It's been really <laughs> awesome having you on. Uh, thank yeah, you for shedding okay. some lights on uh, on the political situation in Sweden uh, these days. Um, yeah, I would recommend people to to kind of look into this because, um, like I, like I've said before on my channel, um, socialism is not meant to be national like national. It's meant to be a global thing. We're all. We have comrades all over the world, and we want every one of them to, to uh, you know, be lifted up, uh, no matter where they are. So yeah, uh, thank you so also, much. Also, also, yeah, I want to add one thing. Oh yeah, well. of course. Uh, considering the last things that happened, know the worth of the democracy, because. You're seeing the weaker side of it right now. And, you know, know what you have to defend. So when you defend democracy, you're not defending just you. You're defending people. Just know what you're seeing on live television right now. Or tomorrow. Tomorrow especially if something happens. Oh, yeah, democracy definitely. Is, democracy is always under threat. So even if you're a socialist, be wary to protect democracy. That is all. That is my last word. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, you can drop your links in chat. And uh, please, everyone, go follow him on YouTube and the Twitters and wherever. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. I will link everything in the chat. Yeah, anytime, man. I'll see you. See you.